These clamps are based on a design by Bellevue Woodshop. He's got a fantastic channel, very ingenious solutions. If you'd like to build some of your own, go check out his channel. I'll put a link in the description. He's got plans, definitely get them. These are fantastic clamps. So I started by cutting down the metal rods, both the threaded rod and the tube. And I used just simple electrical conduit. Um, it was cheap, it was easy to cut. You could cut it with the hacksaw, although definitely the jigsaw works better. And cutting these down first worked well to get those long tubes out of the way. So after grinding some of the edges, then I could move on to the threaded rod. And this was a, a 10 foot piece of super strut, I think it's called. It was in the electrical department and it's cheap and worked great. The jigsaw worked well for cutting this. Although I found after overheating a few blades and ruining them that bimetal blades uh, work quite well. Then it was time to cut down the basic blocks, and I'm not even sure what wood this is. I found these, they're possibly turning blanks of some kind, and I found them at a used supply store. These were large, I didn't have a great way to break them down, so I had to cut them twice on the table saw, which also meant I had some ridges left over that just took a little bit of cleanup, hand plane. Made pretty quick work of that. And then I can start cutting them down into the actual blocks. So most of these are the same size. I'm cutting uh, longer blocks and some shorter blocks. Then I moved on to cut the little metal bracket that helps support and uh, really bite into the metal tube. Now, I made a lot of mistakes here. You can see I'm trying to drill this large hole all at once. I, I now know that you should drill this in sequence. Drill a series, uh, a small hole, then a little bit larger, and a little bit larger, and that will work much better. I pretty much ruined this bit, and I threw, as you'll see here, uh, I threw the Jacob chuck on my drill press uh, several times. So use a lot of cutting fluid and drill successively larger holes and you'll have a better experience, I suspect, than I did. Watch this, small hole, easy to drill. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is simple, you know, so a galvanized a piece of metal, fairly cheap. So once I had the holes drilled, I just went back in, chamfered them with the drill bit, and I'm using a, a scrap piece of plywood, which was a good thing because there's metal bits and shavings that get all over. I, you don't want those embedded in a, your workbench. And then you can cut these down into uh, the little pieces. By the way, I... I said earlier that I was using this electrical conduit, which worked fantastically. It was three quarter inch. The outside diameter ended up being 15 sixteenths of an inch. So that's a pretty weird dimension. And it came into play here where I'm, I need to drill all of the holes that need to fit that tube exactly. So I had to get uh, a few drill bits specifically at 15 sixteenths to work with that stock. So whatever you use, just make sure you have uh, uh, drill bits that, or an accurate measurement of what your actual tubing is. But here it was pretty straightforward. Just set up my stop locks and I could drill. Uh, some of these holes get drilled all the way through and some of them get drilled only part of the way because they're the end pieces.
And here I was kind of testing to make sure I had it right down the middle. It was pretty close. It was definitely close enough to work. I, I didn't need to fix anything. It was just a tiny bit off. But, uh, and here I'm drilling the holes that will accept the washer. So you can see the washer fits in the larger and there's also a recessed hole beyond that. So with all the holes drilled, now I could go and thread, I'm actually tapping the actual, the wood block itself. So I chamfered it a little bit and then um, start threading it or tapping it. And this is sped up of course, but here it is at real speed. Take this slow. I made the mistake a few times of going too fast and even though you're working in an existing hole, you can definitely get that skewed if you go too fast. So take it nice and slow and then it was fairly straightforward to you know, tap all of these, these blocks. So with those done, uh, I could cut the rabbits, if you will, um, into some of the blocks. I just set the blade at the right height. And then it's fairly straightforward to start cutting these down each side. And do the small ones as well. So. I was really trying to, to just use processes that I could repeat easily. Obviously I'm building a whole bunch of clamps. And here was just a test um, to cut off that little extra bit, but I didn't feel really um, comfortable running all of these right against the, the fence. so. This was a better setup. Got the table saw sled out and set up a little fence that I could press against. And this was a safe way to cut to make the cuts. This worked really well, so time to, time to get busy, do them all. You can see that these two pieces have uh, sort of chamfered sides. The one, the top piece more for aesthetics, the other uh, is kind of necessary. But in cutting these, I originally planned to just cut them on the bandsaw. So I marked out the angle and made this cut. And, and this was fine and I could have done more like this, but <clears throat> It wasn't, um, wasn't really accurate, and I, I thought there's probably a bit of, be a better way to do this. So I started, you know, I'm still marking these, thinking I'm going to cut them on the bandsaw, and just a few in, I realized I should just set up a way to do this on the table saw. It'll be quicker, more accurate. So I figured out where to set up, and just found a good hefty block to hold them down and then I can just repeat this for each one. Now this worked really well and I, I dare say you know it was pretty safe but actually I'm only supporting it on the back by one side so there there's a better way to do this and, and I did it from here on out which is just create a scrap piece at the angle necessary. So here you can see the whole piece is, is supported in the back. And, and this was just a simple 45 degree cut, but it certainly would have worked previously. And this is the better way to do it. So, make a, a 
simple throwaway piece of scrap that, that you can clamp in and it works much better and it comes in handy later for any little champ chamfers that I'm cutting on here. So I'm starting to get pieces ready. Um, so I glued in all of the washers so that those could be setting up and drying. I'm just using a two-part epoxy, simple epoxy in here. Lots of pieces. <laughs> so, okay, I'm ready to cut the sides. Now on these, I redrew these so that they were basically mirrors of each other. So that I could make one cut and cut all of the pieces at once. So first I started, I broke down some simple quarter inch uh, plywood, Luan plywood, cheap stuff. Uh, but it worked, it worked just, just fine. So with all those blocks, I taped them together so that they were all one piece. And then you can see I've got this paper, which is a full scale printout. And uh, like I said, it's just mirrors of each other. So I was able to just do this with one cut and get all of these done at once. Uh, that worked out pretty well. This wasn't in the original plan, um, but it was fairly easy to draw up in SketchUp and then print out. So if you wanted to do it this way, that, that would be fine. So to assemble the that main centerpiece, I just put the sides of the uh, top and bottom on to hold it and then some glue. This puts it all in place. A few brad nails to hold it in place. I did not put brads at the base I, uh, until after I had taken it off. I tried a few like that and I ended up shooting brads close to the pipe and it just caused problems. So. It was better to shoot the brads, all the brads in after pulling it off. Now installing the metal bracket, some hand clamps held it in place and then I could put the pipe in and I used some super glue and used that to put it in place and get it to glue in really quickly. And then I put in two screws to hold it uh, really well. But the super glue was great because I could get it just where I wanted. It was, uh, you want it almost touching the pipe, but not quite. If, it, if it's touching the pipe, it's harder to move up and down. And if it's too far away, then it doesn't grab close enough. So you want it just almost touching. I made enough of these that I made some that went all, you know, too close, too far away. Most of them work pretty well. And at this point, uh, it was a good time to glue on one of the sides. So I'm gluing the, the top on, if you will, so that those can set up and then move on and make the handles. Now for the handles, I had some of the uh, cutaway material left over, so that would work fine. And just break this down and I cut it into squares. I cut it into, oh, I don't remember, eight or ten inch long uh, square stock and then I could work on both sides and then just cut it in half. Now here I'm setting up my stop to drill a straight down the middle and you can see that by rotating it I get a good idea of how it's off. So then I adjust my stops and I'm getting closer to the center. So with a little more adjustment, when I rotate it four times and I tried another one just to be sure, both of them I had directly in the center. So now I feel confident that I can 
drill these holes that will accept the threaded rod for the handles. So again, I'm just drilling both sides of this. Each one of these blocks will become two handles. And then just setting up that the router table so that I can chamfer all of the sides. Make a nice comfortable grip. Booyah. Okay, so these are ready to cut down to final length. That's pretty straightforward. And then uh, just, I, I wanted to, I thought about sanding the edges over, but then I found that I could use that stop I'd made previously and just create little 45 degree chamfers on these. Now I'm not basing this uh, against the the bottom of the sled, I set that little orange clamp there and I'm holding it against that because once you start cutting these chamfers it messes with where they sit against the base so I'm pulling it against the clamp instead. And turned out luckily that the you know that middle assembly worked great to hold the handles while they dried. So it was time for final assembly. Um, I, I put a coat of hard oil number nine on all my parts, just to a simple one coat. Um, not too worried, these are gonna get banged up and used and uh, hopefully for many years to come. Then when it was time to put them together, just put a little bit of wax in the thread and then used two nuts and tighten them against each other so that they stay in place. And I put them just slightly beyond uh, the threaded rod. So the threaded rod will stick out just a little bit and, and protrude into, you know, beyond that washer. In the original design, um, I think he, he ground over the washers or the nuts a little bit and, and that, you know, that's, that's a great idea. I just found I didn't need to do that. So I didn't, you know. So to put this together, you put that middle section in halfway and then thread a rod and then I could glue in the end. Rinse and repeat. I made various lengths of these, a couple uh, a couple that were pretty long, and then about eight or so that were uh, about 36 inches long, and then another 12 or so that were, oh, whatever these are, 16 inches, 20? <laughs> After all the glue was dried, these are pretty much done. I did uh, put a screw in at each end, the top and bottom, to make sure that they hold in well. So you got to screw through the threaded rod. But this was easy because they're all glued in place already. So that was it. They're done. They're ready to use. They work fantastic. Um, I think it's such a great design. I've used them on a couple projects already. And go make some. I hope you enjoyed this build. I have more in the works, so do subscribe. Thanks all.